Hey everybody, welcome to Puget Sound Garden Life. Today I'm going to be taking you on a September fall garden tour and I'm also going to be reflecting on the 2020 growing season, talk about things that I want to change and things that I was really surprised and they went really well. I want to start by giving you a little bit of history about our yard. We've lived in this house for three summers now and our backyard is a big slope it used to be just a big hill with a lot of mature perennials that were beautiful but weren't conducive the slope wasn't conducive to vegetable gardening so in the spring of 2019 we had these big retaining wall terraces installed and i couldn't be happier that we did that that means that last summer was our first growing season and this area that i'm standing in right now last summer here in this area we just planted some corn for fun and down a little bit further were some blueberry plants and this side to my left was just a big slope that was full of weeds and at the end of last growing season in the fall i purchased a lot of discounted perennials from stores that were just trying to get things gone for the season and i planted them in here in the fall and let them overwinter this past spring, I brought in a ton of good soil, the same soil that I put into my raised beds, and amended this area so that there was a lot more healthy, organic growing medium because it was mostly just compact fill dirt from the construction of the retaining wall. So I took all the plants out that I had put in there that winter and amended the soil and then put more perennials in. So this is the first year for a lot of these plants, except for those blueberry bushes. Then I planted a lot of annuals from seed, like these zinnias. What I wanna talk about now are the things I want to change about this area and things that went well in this area. Sorry for the bad lighting, but we're gonna make it work. So this is an artichoke plant and when these blooms are in full bloom, they are just amazing and beautiful and the bees love them. I'm actually not really that into eating artichoke. My husband likes it, so I wanted to grow it for him, for the bees and for the beauty. But this plant, they're all trimmed off right now, has some really large limbs with leaves that break off and make a huge mess around it. So to keep the plants around it from getting squished by all those leaves, I had to kind of keep basically a six foot diameter of space free of plantings around it. And in my cottage garden, I want to keep it full and packed and don't want big bare spaces, even though it wasn't bare when the artichoke was there, but it's just too big of a plant for me and I'd prefer to have something else there. This plant right here is a red flowering currant and I love it, but as you can see, it just kind of blends in with everything. So around it, I've got a lot of flowering annuals and a lot of other perennials that have a very similar texture. And just this whole bed in general has very similar texture. So I'd like to replace this with an evergreen shrub, probably some sort of dwarf variety. I haven't decided what yet, but it needs to be something small and I'm really looking forward to a change in the texture in this area, but something with nice winter interest. Some of the flowering annuals that I've been super pleased with are these zinnias right here. They've been loaded all season, and you can see they even have some more blooms on them. And I'm thinking after this nice weather we're gonna have this week, it's gonna explode some more. I really love the combination of those zinnias, this salvia, and this coleus. So one of the changes I wanna make in this bed next year is to plant a lot more coleus as a bedding plant combined with that salvia and those cute little zinnias right there. What I've learned this year about growing flowering annuals, and you can't see a lot of them right now because they're spent, but there's some bachelor's buttons right there and I've got lots of other things throughout here. But with flowering annuals and perennials, I need to do a much better job of staking them and supporting them to really make the garden look a little bit tidier and to let everything shine and stand out. 
Plus it makes it a lot easier to cut flowers if they're not all flopping over and hanging on everything else. Here in the cottage garden, I have three different varieties of blueberry plants. And in the past, they've all done really well. They were previously in containers. Then last year was their first year in ground. And last year we did net them uh, to keep the birds away because we do have a lot of birds around here and they sure love these blueberries. However, this year, because I packed this area so full with other plants, it really wasn't working to net these berries because taking the netting on and off, I didn't have a frame for the net. I just draped them on the plants. Then when you pull the netting off, you end up ripping off berries and leaves. Plus there was a lot of other flowers around that didn't work with the netting. So what I'm hoping for this winter is to build a dedicated blueberry raised bed where I can build a frame around it and then hang the netting on the frame. It's going to really help us with harvesting our blueberries before the birds get to them. So I know the blueberries are kind of hard to see right here, uh, but here's one bush and then there's two more bushes behind me. Another thing that I struggled with with my blueberries this year was that I didn't get them enough water and they were overcrowded. So they did not have the best growing season in general. So I'm really looking forward to giving them a dedicated space where I can tend to them. They are going to be free from other things around them and I can get them netted. One of the plants that I've really fallen in love with this year and mostly because of the winter interest it provides and just because of the texture it adds to the cottage garden here is this blue fescue grass. I purchased a few plants last fall and put them in here, but then I also decided to start some from seed. And what I was really pleased and surprised by is how easy it was to grow these from seed and how well they turned out after their first growing season. I'm gonna give you a closer in view of the ones I purchased as starts and planted last fall, and then the ones that I grew starting in, I think it was January or February from seed and let you see how they turned out. Then the ones that I started from seed are here. As you can see, it looks super healthy. I'm really pleased at how big it got. These were all started by seed as well, and they just add a really nice texture to the garden and fabulous winter interest. Welcome to my South Terrace vegetable garden. I wanna give you a little bit of background on this area, and then I'm gonna talk about things that went really well this year and some things I wanna change. Last growing season in 2019 was the first year we grew anything here because the retaining walls and the terraces were just built that spring of 2019, like I mentioned earlier. And last summer, we just grew straight in the ground. We used the soil that was here because uh, from what was built with the retaining wall, which was really crappy. It was super compacted, really nutrient poor, a lot of gravel, it was horrible. I did amend the soil a little bit, but it wasn't the best. So this past winter, we built these raised beds and amended the soil here with these raised mounded beds. However, uh, this I just don't think this is enough soil in here. I'd like to add a little bit more. And a lot of the water will, and soil, as you can see, comes down into the pathway. So one thing I want to add this winter is just a narrow board, real low right here, to really just hold that soil back off the path and to help keep the water in the soil. On this side, everything went great. I was super pleased with how these boxes turned out. The trellises are awesome. And I'll definitely be amending the soil in the box with compost once I remove all of my plants this winter. One of the things that's really important to me in my garden is to maximize how much food and beautiful things I can grow in the limited space that I have. So one thing I've been working on this year is interplanting vegetables and flowers together and different variety of vegetables. What I learned, for me at least, 
was uh, that interplanting things with tomatoes, it didn't go very well. In this area here, I interplanted uh, sunflowers with the tomatoes and it was beautiful, but I think that it just would have been better to have the tomatoes by themselves and not have the extra uh, shade from the leaves, but also moisture dripping off those sunflower leaves onto the tomatoes. I think I want the tomatoes just all by themselves. Down here a little bit as well, I also interplanted some uh, green beans with the tomatoes and pretty much the same thing again is that it's just not for me. Uh, one, there are a couple more reasons why with the green beans. Um, when pruning tomatoes and accidentally cutting a green bean, then you lose that whole vine and the top part of the plant. So there's room for pruning mistakes and I prune my tomatoes heavily. So having the green beans in there, they just got in the way. Uh, it's also hard for me when I'm visually picking the green beans. It's hard because I have to like really search and change my mind like what a green bean looks like. So here I'm looking at so much different foliage. I've got the tomato leaves, I've got the tomatoes, I've got the green bean leaves. I don't see any green beans right here. Um, but it made it really hard to pick the green beans. And for me, I like to just look at a wall of green beans and it makes it a lot quicker and easier to find them. Now, obviously I could have done some purple pole beans or some rattlesnake beans, you know, beans that have a different color contrast. Um, actually, I did plant some rattlesnake beans. They just didn't germinate. So uh, for me, oh yeah, here there's even some flowers, some purple, those might be some flowers. So maybe, maybe I did have a few rattlesnake beans germinate. Um, but the moral of the story for me and my garden, I'm not going to be interplanting any other tall crops with my tomatoes. I also need to figure out what's going to be best to plant at the base of my tomatoes. I started the year off planting peppers down here as well as basil. I know I've heard a lot that basil grows great with tomatoes, but in this particular bed, everything down here at the feet of the tomatoes, the base of the tomatoes, it doesn't get as much sun as I would like it to, and it got a lot of drips from rain of things dripping off the tomatoes and the sunflowers. Some of the peppers did great. However, I removed quite a few that were in here, and I moved them up to my deck. Now I've got a lot of my fall garden planted in here, and I think next year I'm going to use this area to plant a lot more greens during the summer because it does get uh, stay a little bit cooler down there, and I think it'll be a good spot for that. However, right now it's full of brassicas and different salad greens. For the tomatoes I grew this year, I grew a few large beefsteak type varieties. I grew a yellow pear, some sun golds, and my favorites have been the sun golds and these large red cherries. They have just been knocking my socks off with how much they've produced and they're absolutely fabulous for dehydrated for sun-dried tomatoes. I really, really love cooking with sun-dried tomatoes and use them on a regular basis. So I couldn't be more pleased at the productivity of these plants. However, conversely, my Roma tomatoes have been a different story. They were super slow to take off. They are a determinant plant and I'm not as accustomed to growing determinate tomatoes, so it was a big learning curve for me on how to prune them. I'm a master at pruning cherry tomatoes and indeterminate tomatoes for my growing space. These <laughs> did not go well. However, they finally took off and developed a bunch of fruit, and I'm so excited that we're gonna be having a week of nice weather. So these will all ripen up and I can harvest them. What I've decided to do is I want to try Romas again, even though this didn't go super well, but I'm going to try them up on my north terrace. The trellis there is a bit shorter, that area gets a little bit more sun, and I need to be able to move my crops around. 
and the determinate varieties of tomatoes will be really good for having over in that north terrace, which I'll show you a little bit later. Over here is an example of where interplanting things went well. So this is kind of like the three sisters method. I've got green beans and sunflowers, and I did have some squash at the base here. I had some a zucchini plant. I had a uh, what I had some sort of squash variety. I, for, I forget what it was. It only had one squash on it. It was pretty poor performance, but I'm very pleased with how the green beans and sunflowers turned out together. It's really helpful for my eyes to be able to look through here and harvest beans. You can see I need to get out here and harvest these. Um, thankfully, since things are colder and it's slowing down, Whereas these green beans, if I didn't get out here today and harvest these, tomorrow they'd be way too big. So I love them. My family loves beans. One thing I learned is I should probably grow more beans because that's something my kids will eat. All right, so now I'm going to show you a few things in the raised mounded bed that are opposite of this trellis. Uh, I've grown Brussels sprouts a few times. I've never been this successful, however, I'm still not that successful. My plants are huge and beautiful. Uh, however, the heads on them, the actual sprouts, have not really formed, well, sorry, formed very well yet. So, and these have been planted in here since, oh, probably, I should have checked this first, I'm sorry. Uh, these have been planted, I'd say, since April and they still are chugging along. I'm gonna give you a closer up view and talk about a few things with them. So you can see that the heads are starting to develop but haven't really put on much size. And instead of making a tight head, we've got these extra leaves. They're, they're more of a loose leafy head. The stalks on these are just huge. That's probably about two inches in diameter and I've been trimming off the leaves as they grow. And one thing that I decided to try, my dad gave me a tip, was to cut off the main growing tip and that will hopefully divert the energy into producing some sprouts on here. But as you can see, there's not much in the way of sprouts. So I want to grow Brussels sprouts again because I want to master them, but I think next year I might grow one or two plants instead of six. They have just taken up so much space in the garden and haven't produced anything yet. Where I, They did have some spaghetti squash growing underneath them, so I got a little bit of food out of it thus far, uh, but it's really not worth my space in the garden. All right. Next, I'm going to jump into what I've got planted in here for my fall garden. I've got a lot of different brassicas growing in my fall garden. Here I've got cauliflower that you can see. There's a bunch of radishes. There's kohlrabi. And there's broccoli over here. And a lot of other stuff in my, <laughs> my other bed that I'll show you in a bit. But what I learned is that... I need to plant my seeds a lot earlier than what I did. So these plants here, these are sized up pretty good. I'm pretty happy with those. Those were planted the first week of August and grown in my garage. And then I have been growing starts uh, since then at about two weeks apart. And a lot of them just have not sized up very much. So this right here is some broccoli that I planted August 28th. I actually direct seeded this. They germinated really well, but they are just not putting on any girth. So what I learned is that I should just get all of this started sooner. Now the radishes, they are great. I could have started some sooner just to harvest sooner, but they're gonna be just fine. Also the peas, I did plant some sooner and I have some ones that are a lot more mature, but not a lot of them germinated. So I need to make sure I get those started sooner as well. And the trouble is that a lot of the space just wasn't ready yet for having things planted. So it's gonna be really important that I use my growing space 
under my lights in the garage to get things started. This blue spice basil is really kind of crowding out all my peas that are growing between there, but it's really one of the only things in bloom down here right now, so I've got to keep that for the bees. Got more fall veggies growing here, tons of radishes. I just can't let go of these sunflowers yet. There's still a few flowers. And some more cauliflower down at the end. All right, it was way too bright out here to film this North Terrace garden area. So it's now the evening, the sun is just starting to set and the lighting is perfect to finish up this garden tour here in September. So this North Terrace bed is super similar to the garden bed I showed you earlier. And I just wanna give you a look at what's going on, talk about what I wanna do differently and the things I've learned. So starting off, just coming into the bed, there's my nasturtiums. I had those planted in between a lot of these retaining wall bricks and they were amazing for beginning of the year and into the summer. Uh, I did cut a lot of them back though to give more room to the squash and other things that I was growing up in the bed. So I had hoped that this retaining wall would just be full of butternut squash, kind of like my spaghetti squash was on the other side, but my butternut squash did not do really well this year. As you can see here, I've got two that are just finishing up, curing up. There's one, there's another one hiding under there. And I think that I've saved this seed for a little too long and it, a generation or so ago, must have crossed with something else and it just has not really done very well. So it's either that the seeds got crossed and I need to start fresh or the plant, when I planted it, maybe I planted it a little too early and it was too cold, but the leaves were really kind of shriveled up and stunted looking not shriveled as in dry, but shriveled as in um, deformed. And so even though I really love this variety of butternut squash, it's the ar autumn harvest kind, and I'll show you what a true one should look like. Uh, I'm gonna start with some fresh butternut squash seed next year and hope that it will perform a little bit better for me in my garden. So also in this area down below me, this is an area where I've planted a bunch of herb starts. Got lavender, rosemary, sage, and I can obviously use it for culinary uses too, but really the idea is just to fill in this lower rock wall and prevent weeds from growing. And they took off like crazy this year. They did so good. I planted a lot of really small one inch starts and some rosemary that I started myself, and I'm just gonna chalk it full next year. It's really helped plant those small starts because I can't really dig into this soil much because it's really just a bunch of gravel and rock and planting even something like a two inch start is just way too difficult. So here it is looking gorgeous. I'm going to give you a tour of the raised mounded bed from down here because that's one of the things I really love about this terrace garden is that from right here I can stand and search for all those cabbage moth caterpillars and make sure that these are not getting munched on. You can see they have been getting munched on, but what I really love about this is just being able to garden right at the height I'm at. So let me show you things. This area started with a spring garden with a lot of brassicas, broccoli, cauliflower, kohlrabi, and then I transitioned it into a lot of squashes intermixed with some different flowering annuals. I've got snapdragons and zinnias and nasturtiums. And I've pulled a lot of the squashes and have now planted my fall brassicas in this bed again. I amended the soil with some fertilizer before doing that. And hopefully they'll be nice and happy. One thing I'm going to do differently next year is that I'm not going to intermingle so many squash, particularly winter squash, together because I don't want them cross-pollinating and making weird squashes. Not that I'm not willing to eat those, but I really want to be able to save seed that is true to form. 
here I've got a few butternuts. So um, this right here is what the autumn harvest, I believe it's called, butternut looks like when it's true to form. But you can see that it has also ones that look a lot different. Uh, so in a few examples of the stunted leaves, that, here's a great example. This leaf, it's yellow now because it's getting old, but it was just kind of stunted and deformed to begin with and didn't really ever take off as a super healthy plant. Plus it wasn't, it was a very compact grower and didn't really spread and, and come down the rock wall like I wanted it to. These zinnias are my favorite. I picked these up from Fred Meyer and I'm definitely gonna be saving those seeds and growing some more of those. So in this raised mounded bed as well, I will be adding a board right here so that it can keep the soil in the bed and keep the water in the bed. It's such a beautiful spot this time of the day. I was really hoping to get two full crops, bountiful crops of things off of this section of my trellis bed. I had a fabulous pea harvest this spring. It started early, it went fabulous. I'm definitely gonna plant my peas at the same time. I don't remember off the top of my head when I planted them, but thank goodness it's written in my garden journal. Um, after that, my plan was to plant butternut squash. However, I didn't get them started in the garage soon enough. I planted these butternuts from seed on July 9th, and it was about a month too late. The plants did really well, and I have a couple of fruit on them. Uh, here's one, and here's another of that autumn harvest kind. This is a different variety. I actually got this as a start from the store. Um, so this fruit and the fruit back there were off a plant that I bought around the beginning of July, but it was already a start, so it was probably at least like three to four weeks old. So now I know uh, that I need to have my butternut squash that are going to be planted after my peas. Uh, I need to start them four to six weeks earlier than I did. And then that way, the day I take those peas out, I can get those squash plants in the ground and ready to go. Right now I've got just a few beets and things in here. They did not germinate very well, but that's okay if they don't turn out. Uh, that'll just get me amending the soil even sooner. Down at this end of the bed, I planted a ton of cucumbers. We had an amazing cucumber harvest this year, and dare I say I might have planted too many cucumbers. I don't know, I'll probably end up planting the same last, next year because my family just loves cucumbers so much. Um, and down here, this is where I grew my carrots in the spring. I'm also growing them here again in the fall just because it's convenient and I had the space available. So I've got succession planting of carrots, uh, three different plantings you can see. I'll give you a little closer up view so you can see kind of the difference in how old each of those successions are. You can see my nasturtiums have just gone crazy and are taking over the cucumber trellis. But back to our focus here. So these carrots, these are a Nantes type ingot and I planted these on August 10th and we just totally went hog wild and threw the seed all throughout there. Then this next section was about two weeks later. You can see that the germination rate wasn't as good throughout here, but I'll still take it that's better than no carrots. And then at the end here, these were planted September 10th. So a full month later than that first section. And again, there's a lot of spots where things did not germinate, but there is some pretty decent germination in here. So I will again take that and hopefully these will start to develop some carrots before it gets too cold and we hit our first frost date but these can just slowly grow through the winter and maybe even produce come spring all right so that was my north 
terrace veggie bed and I do have some more vegetables growing up on my deck and I know this video is probably getting kind of long but it's really beautiful right now the Sun just set and I figured why not take you up on the deck and show you the veggies I have growing there here on my right this is a an azalea hedge in progress I'm hoping in a few years it's really gonna fill in and just be a stunning little hedge right there so up on my deck I've got some various containers with mostly flowering annuals but I moved some peppers and some herbs up here when they just were not doing well downstairs downstairs well it is downstairs uh, in in the main garden so this is our deck. So out there is Commencement Bay, which is part of the Puget Sound. It is so beautiful. The sunsets this time of the year and the spring are just stunning. And down here on our deck, it gets fabulous shade starting this time of the year about noon. Or I said fabulous shade. I meant fabulous sun starting around noon. So that's just one of my flower containers. And down here I've got two pots with basil that I moved up. It was doing really poorly uh, down below because it was underneath my tomatoes and just was getting wet and not enough sun. And it's really taken off since I've moved up here. In each of those, I also have a kale plant. So once this basil is taken out by frost, that Lacinato kale will keep going and have us a little bit of greens from the deck. Over here, I've got a planter that has peppers. What's up, baby? Um, we are going to try to do our Star Wars battle today. Oh my gosh. May the force be with you, Cause, sweetheart. Because daddy got his blue lightsaber. Oh, what? But Daddy got a blue lightsaber? But it doesn't have sound like all. <gasps> but, oh. but it's big old. Oh my goodness, it's I can't wait to time. see. Have fun. All right, back to the vegetable tour. So these peppers did amazing once I moved them up here. And underneath the peppers is some Thai basil, which also really took off once I moved it up here. You can see it's ready to harvest some more. It's doing fabulous. I'll be real honest, I forgot to label these peppers when I put them in the ground. These I grew from seed, I believe. Actually, this one I might not have grown from seed. I'm not too certain what it is. Oh yeah, I did. It's some sort of bell type pepper. And this one I think is a lunchbox pepper variety. And then this one is a poblano and it's doing really well. It's got probably about uh, six fruits on it, which for me and in the Puget Sound without a greenhouse or anything like that in my eyes is great. Here's another one there. And I'm just gonna let these keep on growing until it gets too cold for them. So I'm actually thinking about bringing this whole box with those three peppers and the basil inside to my new indoor plant propagation area up in my office, which I will probably make a video about down the road when it's more winter and we'll see how things are growing. Well, that's gonna be the end of my September garden tour and reflection of the 2020 growing season. I'm just absolutely tickled pink with how well things have grown, with how much food we are able to provide for our family and how much beauty and enjoyment we've got out of this space. I am so excited to have all of the notes that I've taken in my garden journals and to have learned things through things going wrong and things going well and being able to make those changes so that next year things can go even better. But as with gardening every year, you never know how things are gonna go and it's always a surprise. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up or subscribe. It would really help my channel grow. And I look forward to sharing some more content with you soon. 
we just ordered some red wiggler earthworms to start our very own vermicomposting bin and my boys are really excited for them to arrive in the mail in a few days so we're going to be documenting that journey of our first jump into vermicomposting so stay tuned hit that subscribe button if you're interested in watching us learn about worm farming have a great day